بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. So sisters, one regarding your behavior, you are the mothers of the future generation. You have your children's eyes on you 24 hours a day. More than they see their father. They are looking at you, listening to your voice, looking at your face, looking what you do in the morning. If you don't pray, do you think your children will pray? If you are cursing and complaining, what do you think your children will do? If you are watching television all day, what do you think your children will be raised up thinking? If you are always demanding, give me this, give me that, why don't you this, why don't you that, what do you think your daughters will do when they grow up? If you are uncovering yourself, disrespecting yourself, showing your aura outside to the people, and what is the aura of the Muslim woman, the nakedness of the Muslim woman, what is her aura? her entire body. All of the woman is aura. But specifically, she has the right to, to show what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ma dhahra min, what ordinarily appears thereof. And there's a just small disagreement among the ulama about what may ordinarily appear. What may ordinarily appear? Her face, and her hands, some ulama said, face and hands, not even the feet, the face and the hands. Then some ulama, they said, no, not even the face. And the majority of them, they said that, not even the face. Because they said the face itself is a place of her beauty. So if the Muslim lady has the ability and the courage and the commitment to even cover her face, Masha Allah, she is also doing herself a favor and she's also doing the Muslims a favor because she removes another level of the fitna. But minimally, she must cover her entire body except for her hands and her face. And some of the ulama even went further and said, if she will cover her hands, this even will still be better because the gloved hand will distinguish her from the open hand of the man. So we cannot say every sister must absolutely cover her face and wear the gloves on her hands. We cannot say that. We say who, those who do it, it's mustahaba. It's good for her. It's a blessing for her. But we don't force the sisters to do that, especially in the kuffar country where maybe they will feel constrained to even go out and they will develop a psychosis for themselves. And we don't force the sisters to do that and make them uh, create a psychosis. No, but you Muslim sisters should minimally cover your entire body, except for your face and hands, minimally. And covering the body doesn't mean wearing jeans and wearing a scarf on your head. No, this is not the body because there are conditions of the clothing. The clothing should not reveal the shape of any part of you. Nor should the clothing be transparent so that your skin can be seen through it. It's very clear. There are more conditions. Nor should that clothing resemble the clothing of the women of Jahiliya. So that means the sisters who's wearing the niqab and it's, it's say uh, uh, um, um, these designer names, Gloria Vanderbilt, CK1, uh, uh, what's the other one, Christ, Christian Dior. You're wearing a niqab with a cross on it. If you're wearing the Christian Dior, they're selling them in Mecca. The sisters, they like it because they have Christian Dior. I mean, it's designer. The niqab is costing 30 pounds, 50 dollars and it has a cross on it, Christian Dior cross. So they were a niqab inside the haram with a cross on it. 
No, sisters. Don't imitate the kuffar. Why are you wearing this uh, designer? What's the, what's the design for? What's the difference between? The wives of the Prophet and the Ummahat al Mu'mineen, when the ayah came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ayah of hijab, when they heard it, they tore their aprons and they covered their faces. They tore their aprons. Their aprons mean they took a part of their clothing, their outer garments, and they covered their faces. So we know that what they did, the Prophet approved of it, so that means that what they did was correct.